lead major corporations, head universities, preside twice over the Supreme Court, and have served as Speaker of the Knesset and Prime Minister. And this uh, circus continues at UNESCO. UNESCO, the UN body charged with preserving world heritage. Now, this is hard to believe, but UNESCO just denied the 4,000 year connection between the Jewish people and its holiest site, the Temple Mount. That's just as absurd as denying the connection between the Great Wall of China and China. Ladies and gentlemen, the UN, begun as a moral force, has become a moral farce. So when it comes to Israel at the UN, you probably think, Nothing will ever change, right? Well, think again. You see, everything will change. And a lot sooner than you think. The change will happen in this fall because back home, your governments are rapidly changing their attitudes towards Israel. And sooner or later, that's going to change the way you vote on Israel at the UN. More and more nations in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, more and more nations see Israel as a potent partner, a partner in fighting the terrorism of today, a partner in developing the technology of tomorrow. Today, Israel has diplomatic relations with over 150 countries. That's nearly double the number that we had when I served here as Israel's ambassador some 30 years ago. And those ties are getting broader and deeper every day. <coughs> World leaders increasingly appreciate that Israel is a powerful country with one of the best intelligence services on earth. Because of our unmatched experience you can't stop it. and proven yeah. capabilities in fighting terrorism, many of your governments see our hope in keeping your country safe. Many also seek to benefit from Israel's ingenuity in agriculture, in health, in water, in cyber, and in the fusion of big data, connectivity, and artificial intelligence. That fusion that is changing our world in every way. You might consider this. Israel leads the world in recycling wastewater. We recycle about 90% of our wastewater. Now, how remarkable is that? <coughs> Given that the next country on the list only recycles about 20% of its wastewater, Israel is a global water power. So, if you have a thirsty world, and we do, there's no better ally than Israel. How about cybersecurity? That's an issue that affects everyone. Israel accounts for one tenth of one percent of the world's population. Yet last year, we attracted some twenty percent of the global private investment in cybersecurity. I want you to digest that number. In cyber, Israel is punching a whopping 200 times above its weight. So Israel is also a global cyber power. If hackers are targeting your banks, your planes, your power grids, and just about everything else, Israel can offer indispensable help. Governments are changing their attitudes towards Israel because they know that Israel can help them protect their people, can help them feed them, can help them better their lives. This summer I had an unbelievable opportunity 
to see this change so vividly during an unforgettable visit to four African countries. This is the first New messages received from 4404. Oh, four, oh, four. Minister in decades. Later today, I'll be meeting with the leaders from 17 African countries. We'll discuss how Israeli technology can help them in their efforts to transform their countries. In Africa, things are changing. In China, India, Russia, Japan, attitudes towards Israel have changed as well. These powerful nations know that despite Israel's small size, it can make a big difference in many, many areas that are important to them. But now I'm going to surprise you even more. You see, the biggest change in attitudes towards Israel is taking place elsewhere. It's taking place in the Arab world. <coughs> Our peace treaties with Egypt <coughs> continue to be anchors of stability in the volatile Middle East. But I have to tell you this. For the first time in my lifetime, many other states in the region recognize that Israel is not their enemy. They recognize that Israel is their ally. A common enemy of Iran and ISIS. Our common goals are security, prosperity, and peace. I believe that in the years ahead, we will work together to achieve these goals, work together openly. So Israel's uh, diplomatic relations are undergoing nothing less than a revolution. But in this revolution, we never forget that our most cherished alliance, our deepest friendship, is with the United States of America, the most powerful and the most generous nation on earth. The most generous nation on earth, other than to its own people. I'm how much did we give uh, Iran, David? No, no, no. Uh, David, how much we give the, the Mexicans? David, I wish you to be still. David, I want you to be still. The United Nations denounces the The United States supports it. And a central pillar of that defense has been America's consistent support for Israel at the U.N. I appreciate President Obama's commitment to that long-standing U.S. policy. In fact, the only time that the United States cast the U.N. Security Council veto during the Obama presidency was against an anti-Israel resolution in 2011. As President Obama you pushed it down too far, Diamond. At this point, Peace will not come from statements and resolutions at the United Nations. <coughs> I believe the day that Israel will be able to rely on many, many countries. To the, the days when you are ambassadors reflect the those days are coming to an end. Ladies and gentlemen, today's automatic majority against Israel at the UN reminds me of the, of the story, the incredible story of Hiro Onada. Hiro was a Japanese... Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, never fails to capture the attention of many nations as he speaks. He began with changes that he country <laughs> At the United Nations, he talked about water resources and how Israel That's can play my such an important part in getting those to the rest of the world. And he says they are changing relationships with every nation, including those on the African continent, as he talks. He, he did poke uh, a little bit of criticism. He always does at the UN. He says, what about the joke called the Human Rights Council, where women are being raped, slaughtered, and so forth? 
Um, so he is also chiding some of those people in the room. We are going to continue to watch his remarks, but there's breaking news on the situation that happened in Charlotte, North Carolina, where a black man was killed by a black police officer there. The attorney general, Loretta Lynch, just made remarks on Charlotte. We want to go to that and watch. Uh, let me address the recent events wow. in Charlotte, North Carolina. The recent death of Keith Lamont Scott in, in Charlotte is currently under local investigation. We are, of course, aware of the tragic events that resulted in his death. And the Department of Justice and the FBI are currently monitoring that matter. Now, for the second day in a row, protests in response to Mr. Scott's death took place in Charlotte last night. And for the second day in a row, those protests were marred by violence, this time leaving one person on life support and several individuals injured. An awful reminder that violence often only begets violence. Now, the details of what happened last night are still under review by local authorities. But today, the Department of Justice is sending four members of our Community Relations Service to Charlotte. Our Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services has also offered technical assistance and support for crowd mediation to local police. And the local FBI office stands ready to assist local law enforcement as well. But let me also speak to the people of the state of North Carolina, a beautiful state, a great state, and my home state. I know that these are difficult times, and I know that the events of recent days are painfully unclear and they call out for answers. But I also know that the answer will not be found in the violence of recent days. Let us all seek a peaceful way forward. Now, most of the demonstrators gathered last night were exercising their constitutional and protected right to peaceful protest in order to raise issues and to create change. We need your voice. We need your passion. We need your commitment. But I urge those responsible for bringing violence to these demonstrations to stop because you're drowning out the voices of commitment and change and you're ushering in more tragedy and grief in our communities. Now the tragic events in Charlotte and in Tulsa, Oklahoma earlier this week once again have underscored the divisions that persist between law enforcement officers and the communities that we serve, particularly communities of color. And one of my top priorities as Attorney General has been to do everything in my power to help heal those divides. And the Department of Justice will continue working tirelessly to protect the rights of all Americans, to give law enforcement the resources they need to do their jobs safely and fairly to open dialogue, to promote reconciliation, and to reduce violence of all kinds in this It's country. gotten worse since she's been but in as we've office. Seen in months, despite the <sighs> and despite the efforts of many really others not. across the country, we have come together. Orville, she's speaking. Far too many times. Like so why are you speaking? And too many times we allow ourselves to be pulled down the easy path of blame and accusation. I don't piss. Let us choose that path. Let us work together to ensure that all Americans have both a voice and value in this great country of ours. And let me reaffirm my full commitment and the full commitment of this Department of Justice to advancing that effort. And to those who are exercising that most fundamental of our freedoms, we hear your voices and we feel your pain. To all the law enforcement officers who continue to risk their lives day in and day out to keep us safe and to protect those essential freedoms, I extend my deepest thanks and support. But finally, I urge all Americans to ask themselves what they can do to contribute to the more peaceful, the more perfect, and the more just union that is our shared heritage, that is our mutual responsibility, and that is our common goal. Thank you. And moving on to the announcement. The attorney general both in Charlotte and Oklahoma, and we knew that she would have some remarks, and she did. They were prepared and wanted to bring them in their entirety before she talked about some other issues, including mass mail fraud schemes across the globe. Let's bring it out to the couch. We're watching two live events. One of them, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, and while he was speaking off the top, he said, oh, he's going for it. Yeah. It was really well. It was very interesting. I mean, great contrast between those two sets of remarks, where uh, one, it felt to me, the Attorney General was perfectly fine, but there's nothing really there. Whereas when he said, 
thought that in other people, he would really go for it. So I had an incredibly clear moral force in terms of both. And I think that that shows you the power of clarity and strength. And I think that it's something yeah. that, that um, is so often missing from modern political life, where you just get this blah, 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 blah. And to hear someone speak so clearly yeah. and powerfully is really surprising. I think she made a good point, though, Loretta Lynch. I mean, she, and I don't often agree with her. She was saying, stop with the violence, because you're obscuring and you're undermining those out there who have a point. The protesters who are out there for good reason. You're undermining them. And I think we're also seeing, um, you know, a group of people who are demonized law enforcement. <coughs> the same thing is happening here. Israel is demonized. Iran is appeased. And, you know, it's a result of progressivism. And you talk about his criticism. Um, he, he was critical in his, a few places in his speech. But then, quote, the UN, begun as a moral force, has become yeah. a moral farce. And I know we all had a reaction on the couch when he said that. That was just, so it was really refreshing to hear someone say that. That's how I think many people perceive these, these globalized international institutions mm -hmm. run by bureaucrats without any kind of moral principle underlying what they do. It, it's really striking to hear him say that, and I, I think a lot of people appreciate it. It's fascinating to see, I mean, the subject matters are very different with yeah. Attorney General Loretta Lynch and Benjamin Netanyahu at the UN General, General Assembly, but it's interesting to compare and contrast their styles in terms of leadership. Uh, saw on social media a lot of calls for President Obama to step into what was going on last night. I just want to get your quick thoughts, because you've seen some of this in the UK. Yeah, I think that there is definitely a role for political leaders to speak to the nation at a time when the country is anxious and concerned. David, would you please put on some uh, shorts or something? Whatever, that would be nice. Most people do that. Whatever, David. No, David. What do you do, right? I'm tired of this verbal violin call. Good morning, America. Greetings and salutations. I see what's happening, as y'all do. First of all, <laughs> greetings and salutations. Welcome to Grace Walking Under Fire. I'm Oracle Nicole. Right now, stationed, headquartered in the white supremacist hate community of freaks and perverts, drunks and drug addicts, whores and abominations, Westport, Washington, Gray Harbor County, Washington State, the only state in the country that cost their human the right to murder. Black America. I don't know what to say. What you do will not change what walks. What did it do for you having first black president as president? Oh. Uh, Many wrongs. Many wrongs. Those five cops of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Is it turned on? Mm -hmm. As I was saying, those cops of Tulsa, Oklahoma acted like the cops of Washington State, Sodomite Oakland, California. Oklahoma, everywhere around America. As everyone says, oh, they're good, they're good, they're good, but God dang it. I want to ask that little bull dagger. God dang, bull daggers make bad cops. And I can see why. I, mean, I speak of only of experience. Oh, um, no.
Cops, this is your fault. You're the highly trained. You're the one that should be held at a higher standard because you're militarized like that little bold bag in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Why was her camera off? Why aren't these cameras on all the time they're in that car? Huh? Why? Mama, Ella. What can? The radio. I'll charge it. What am I doing, Orville? The beach. Huh? What am I doing? What you have to say is more important than this. And he can t he can't stall. That's the way y'all are. Well, I walk in pace with this abomination. It's you. It's you. Well, I can put this abomination in housing. Get his entitlement, Jake. But it's not my place to stay with this abomination. It's not my fault y'all broke him. Y'all broke. You can see it in the whores and the quitters and the drug addicts of a population of 2,099. 90, I think. Survives black America. You see what fucking walking. For generations, upon generations of generations, carpetbaggers. What you gonna do, tear, off, tear the country? He's heard the AG, that's a bunch of unmitigated bullshit. I'm not able to exercise my constitutional rights. Either in the hate community was for Washington, Aberdeen, Washington, Hokum, I am proud, and I'm going to try very little to go back to that library. You go back and now God's going to tell you why, Mama, Ella, Borgi, these people aren't worth shit. What happened to my Audrey Hepburn? They got this wide piece of shit young girl working. Evil, nasty, god dang, it's like I'm in here at the Nazi library for Jennifer. I tell you, you can't ask them bitches nothing. They're printers, they, they don't have enough ink in them, they're not aligned properly, no, nothing, nothing. And that's done from the printer side. So that means that bitch at Hokama I am proud library. No, I just fucking gave up. I just got up and walked. Gomer's going to sign this today. Today I call you, Senior Senator in Aberdeen. I want to know where I can get this notarized. For a very minimum price. I am a disabled senior. Surprise. In Hood, Los Angeles, I think it was 261 days, people peeped from Bridget Sheridan apartments. 261 days. I live in Los Angeles, now I live in Y'all be fast. And motherfuckers, everyone that comes to me, I'm gonna take a picture of you. You hear me? You hear me, motherfuckers? And, um, on time, I got a viable civil suit against Saul. Uh, the states now immediately. Uh, I'm going to first file a complaint with their civil rights, whatever the fuck they call it. Uh, I began to look for a civil rights attorney.
A.G. Lynch, bitch. I don't have a foundation like the Clintons, but I called your motherfucking office in Sodomite, Oregon. The cops were bad there, two motherfuckers. A.G. Lynch, you will set one of your subordinates as the Clinton Foundation, and you will come down here. You will reinstate my civil rights in the sanctuary state of hate. Do you hear me, madam? Or not? Suffice. Uh, we must move forward quickly. He has no option. I like the idea of having money. Oh. To survive. And I'm going to tell the freaks, Mama, wake up your son. Go get him out of your daughter's bedroom. Come here, puto. Every motherfucker that follows me, I'm going to take a picture of the scenery. Then I began. You're going to love these books. Amazon.com, please help fix your fucking templates. The first book I must do. Here in a roach infested Asian slumlord. I don't care how much you fucking paint it, Gomer. You are Asian. 26 minutes. Suffice. Hang tight, baby. It's hard. When you're trying to help Lucifer to do something that's going to help her. Washington. Mm -hmm. Will you be like Moss Courthouse? I want my divorce. This is the last time. I want my divorce. And he is willing and competent enough to do. Oral is not. How can I put it? Oral isn't Daryl's brother like that. No. Oh no. Oral is not like these others on SSI and all that. But, and he's not schizophrenic. He's not bipolar. Oral has PT esteem. And his symptom is not depressed. He'll weep. But he's not depressed. It's like he sees a dead bird or a crab or whatever. Then this thing about things seeing him. These are medications that can be light. Now, Washington white trash. They need hardcore Thursday. The other day, just this week, we combined this piece of white shit that don't even fucking live here. Coming by here like that little drug addict. Look, listen, you freaks. I'm buying me a camera I'm going to put out there so when y'all come by my window. You fucking freaks. 64. Uglier than sin. You freaks. Why don't y'all go to the, to the Chevron station up here by that treason Westport ship, y'all? They got a. I love this. And I do. Uh, after I finish. I have the forms, I got everything. Oh, he must put that he understands on video. Not only reason why, la my la por qué, but what are his options? Orville has PTSD. 
the voice is not as PTSD. So that's uh, we got to get all this done. It's just too much. And today I got to go get that money order. Uh, I'm going to tell them they got to get it directly from my account. My account is sound for my entitlement check, the most weak and lowered, I think, by Sheba of Aberdeen, Washington. I have the paperwork, baby. Guess where you send me then? See more. <laughs> Hold on tight, motherfuckers. Black America, I'm gonna show you how to take care of shit like this white trash. I'm gonna show you. You don't tear it up. Oh, baby, but this shit, uh-uh. Oh, uh, I want my case and his case brought up to a federal level. I, w I don't want it to go to state level. This uh, blue state is as corrupt as Los Angeles, California, all the white people, because you like your goddamn white country, because it's your country, and you do what you want. I remember that bitch, uh, Kathy, from the Aberdeen City Council. There ain't no, no racism. Bitch, you got a contract with the state for your menagerie of cruelty. Bitch, let those doves fly. Anyway, in grace of God, be blessed in the man and the man. And freaks, you follow? Our photo, okay? I love scenery shots. Black America, you got just cause. God, even all of it, burn them down. That's scary. Burn them down. Our country. These cops are highly trained. Therefore, like Gomer Powell. <laughs> Did you see him? Don't he look like Mad Max? Put the sack back on. Maybe he'd be a little bit. No. They're white trash. Born of white trash. Evil. Black America. It's not going to change unless you change it. I have no constitutional rights. They poison Gomer. <laughs> they poison Gomer. <laughs> God dang, I hate the son of a bitch's nature, ways, and home training. But I would never. And another thing. Notice my nails. I broke this because Orwell has an issue of opening the door of the truck that he won't fix. But yet, no marks. No. Look at this. These are because of graffiti. No, black America, we've had reason a long time, because we are not black, but we are minority. We are denied housing in a white supremacist community. Aberdeen Rental Connections, white racist track. Aberdeen relative, same god dang thing, but cat. Anyway, we gotta get ready. I gotta go do some things. And get the, I gotta get that mail. Thank God I'm a conehead. Or I would not have had the money to fax it. Not one, twice. Oh, Don Hagar. 
best friend to lose. I have the right. <gasps> Facebook. We are strangers. We are friends in what healthcare has done to us. I have the right to name the Jewish doctors of the cream of the cream of Hood Los Angeles. They were like South Beach Clinic on Montesano and Westport. You have less than thought to rescue me. The Mexicans, los pinche putos, are just bit. And los gringos, oh, you know them. Fuck you. Fuck you. And we do, I do not leave the state. Hell no. I become a truck driver. I become a truck driver. Medicate mister. You can watch my bitch until I get my truck to haul trap or dirt. Like his retarded brother. You know the crystal meth of Orton Washington? Who's got a class A license, can't even fucking read? But I can read. And I know I can drive a straight truck. And I'm, I'm gonna have to come in, y'all gonna have to teach me how to work on those trucks. Oh, no. I don't give up. And I show them the fuck ain't going back into anything resembling government programs other than my entitlement check. No, I could become a truck driver. Put cameras in the apartment. No, you knock on my door. Wherever I am, I will know. He leaves the apartment, I will know. I will know. And yes, we divorce. Finally, I hope, I hope. Oh, uh, I am his conservator. Not his wife. In grace of God, be blessed him. Freaks. 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 Fuck you.